Hi everyone, thanks for taking the time to log into our What's New video for 2022. My name's Cheryl Snedden, I'm an application consultant for Symmetry and I'm going to walk you through what's new in the vault for 2022. So let's take a look. So what's new in Vault 2022 are the installation updates, Autodesk ID integration with the vault, user management enhancements, model states in the vault, the ability to turn off assigning items, replication technology enhancements, general enhancements, and a new interface for the Think Client. So let's take a look, starting with the installation updates. So Autodesk have now introduced something called custom install to your Autodesk account online. So when you log in, you'll have access to custom installations for you personally or as a group. So let's take a look at how that looks online. So when you log into your account, on the left hand side, you'll see custom install and you can add products to your installation per license type. So you can scroll down and select the products that you want to install. And on the right hand side, it will give you options to change what you apply to this installation. So you can see the version, any extensions and any language packs. So we use data standard. Then we can pick on the left hand side more products and we can see that there's a lot more customization for Inventor Professional. So we can change things like the customization settings and whether we install the standard default content center files or not. We can do things like adding extensions and additional language packs to the files as well. So as we select on the left hand side and update on the right, we can then look at what's included. And we can go through a process of install or deployment. We can give it some attributes. So we're going to give it a name. We're going to look at the installation path. And then we're going to agree the terms and create the installer. So when we create the installer, we can then save it to a location on our machine or we can save it to a location on a shared drive. So if we take a look at the deployment this time, there's not much more you have to do with the deployment, although you might want to add a description. And then we can look at the deployment image path, as well as the deployment log file location and the installation path as well. We can agree the terms and again, we can create a deployment. So once we create that deployment, we can save it into the same location or on a different location if need be. So what we can also do is we can change the additional products that we added to the install or deployment. So if we click on add products, then we can go and we can make changes to the product. So in this case, we'll just take out the extension for data standard and we'll click on next. We'll look at what's included. And then we'll go through a process of checking the settings and creating a new deployment. And when we create the new deployment, we can override the file that already exists in our folder location. So let's take a look at what it looks like after the installation files have been downloaded. So when we run them up, we run up the setup files, we get a new window that pops up with um, the green bar, which we can watch. <laughs> And then now we get this new prompted dialog box that allows us to save the product and pick and choose what we want to install during that installation. We now also have the visual percentage of install and in the dialog box, which is really, really good. And once it gets to the certain stage of installing the products, um, once it's installed, it will allow you to start the product almost immediately. So you'll notice that it now introduces a start a button in the dialog box just next to the cancel install. And once it's installed, we can run Vault, we can log in, and we can take a look at the application almost immediately after it's been installed. So let's take a look at our next subject, which is the Autodesk ID integration with the Vault. So when you log into the Vault, now you'll see in the drop down list that you've got an additional Autodesk ID that you can choose to log into the Vault. So let's take a look at how that looks in the application. So when you open up the vault and you're greeted with your login, 
you'll see your authentication drop down list now has access to something called your Autodesk ID. But before we can use that Autodesk ID, we must log in as administrator to have a look at how we set that up inside of our new Manage Access. So you'll see the global settings dialog box has changed. We're going to create a new user. And in this new user dialog box, we can see that now you've got access to things like profile attributes. So we can see that we're typing in some information. And when we click on accounts, under accounts, you've got authenticated by your Windows Authentication Vault account or your Autodesk ID. So if we choose the Autodesk ID and we go ahead and create our roles, add is to the vault. We don't have any groups currently. And if we create that user, now when we close the dialog boxes and we log out as administrator and log back in as the Autodesk ID, it will automatic fill in, automatically fill in the information and we can log into the vault with our authenticated user, which we can see in the bottom right of the application. So the next thing that we're going to look at is our user management enhancements. So as you've seen from some of the dialog boxes that we looked at inside the vault, the global settings dialog box at the top for users and groups has completely changed. So we used to have access to users and groups separately. Now we've just got manage access where we can manage access to the users and the groups. So if we look at the interface, administration can now uh, view and manage users and groups in one interface. We've got a more friendlier user display name where admins can add that display, in, uh, display name in. Um, we've also got profile attributes that can be added and we'll see those soon. And we can also look at things like tracking user logins uh, from the console, the ADMS console. So first things first, let's take a look at logging in um, as administrator, first of all, to have a look at those manage uh, attributes. So let's look at global settings. Um, we go under our manage access. We can see that we've got automatically create using domain groups as well. So we'll leave that active just now and we'll manage the access of our users. So you'll see at the top there, I've got my user profile, but we've also got new for users. We've got new user. We've got some more filters that we can use inside the view. We've got actions for profile attributes. And then what we can do from there is we can look at those actions. So by default, first and last name are in there already. So if we look to edit those attributes just now in the list, we can see the first and second name that we filled in when we created this profile. So what we're going to do now is go back into the profile attributes and we're going to add some new ones. So if we put one in for department, and we're going to add it as an association to the user, first of all. Um, but you will see things like group in there as well. So we'll add department, and then we'll go in and we'll add some more. Um, so we're going to add another new one in, and we're going to put in that manager. And we'll add another one in for area as well. So as we add these in, we can also move them up and down in the list. So if we want manager to be above department, we just click on the blue arrow. So from there, we can say OK to that and we can go back in. And this time we can look at the, um, the edit on the user profile. So when we look at that, we can see the manager has been added to the department and the area has been added to the profile. So we can go into manager and we'll put Chris in because he is my manager. Um, we'll put the department in as MFG and the area being Scotland. OK, so we say OK to that. And then we've got some attributes that have been added to the user profile. So we've now got user profiles within Vault, which is quite interesting. So if we log out and if we log in specifically with my user ID, you'll see that now when I look down at the bottom of the application. So I'm logged in as myself. I can write, I can click on the right corner and I can see all of those attributes that have been applied to my account. And I've also got access to change my account password as well. And the reason I've got that is because I do currently have myself activated as an ID, an Autodesk ID and a Vault account. OK, so I'm going to go back in as administrator just to show you how that looks. So if we go back to tools. 
vault global settings and if we edit the profile so you can see here i've got access to the vault account as well as my user account and that's where i can change my password so currently i've got access to do that but if i untick this and go back and if i log out from my vault account and log in with my autodesk id account then you'll see the difference when we select those attributes at the bottom right hand corner so now i can't change my password so Autodesk have implemented profiles pretty much the same as you would when you were creating profiles for your Autodesk, uh, sorry, Office products. So let's log back in as administrator for now. And let's take a look at the, um, the settings again. So let's go to Global Settings. We'll go under Manage and we'll look at that account setting. We'll look at accounts and we'll add that back in just to give you an idea. So we'll put a password in there. Um, in fact, we'll leave it blank just now and then we'll go back. And from here, we can log out and log back in with our ID. And then when we go down to the bottom right hand corner, we can change our vault. So currently there's nothing, I'll put a password in. And we'll copy that password and confirm it. And we'll say okay to that and close. And then we can log out of this profile, which is our Autodesk ID and log back in with the Vault account so that we can actually see that the password's been specified and confirmed. Okay, and we can look at the settings of our user profile just by selecting the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Okay, so we'll log out of that account for now. We're going to log back in with the administration account. And we're going to go back into our global settings. And this time when we log in, we're going to take a look at that um, at the profile. So we can see that we can import domain users and we've got access to import domain groups as well. So the users and the groups tab are side by side within this management group dialog box, which is quite nice. So you can see that you can apply uh, the, the domain settings respective of your directory. So you can Im implement users per directory now, which is really interesting. I think this actually came from the idea station, which is really good. So let's take a look at those tracking. So the tracking of the users. So we're going to open up the ADMS console and we're going to have a quick look at the console logs. So we're going to go to where the folder exists. And at the moment, you can see all the default logs that you would normally see with the ADMS. But we're going to go into the administration settings, advanced settings, and we're going to make a change. So we're going to enable user logins. But you can also see you've got downloaded files and deleted files as well. So let's look at the user logins first of all. So when we tick the box for user login and we apply that setting, and then we're going to close the dialog boxes and what we'll do is we'll go to the folder location. Um, and what we're going to do is we'll log out of the vault. And this time when we log in with our Autodesk account ID, we're basically going to track the user ID. So we'll open up the ADMS. We'll look at the folder location. And what we can see here is added this file, which is called audit log. And if we choose to view that audit log we can see that as a user i have logged in with my authentication type which is my autodesk id okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at what happens when we create a file so we're going to create the file we're going to check it into the vault um, and once it's checked into the vault we're, we're going to make some changes to the file and we're going to see what's actually logged via the console logs so when we looked at the console log it was basically just around the login user. But now, if we go ahead and make some changes inside of the vault, so first of all, we need to go to the ADMS console again. So in the ADMS console, we'll go back to our administration settings and advanced settings, and we tick the boxes for download and delete of files. So this time, what we're gonna do is, when we go inside the vault, we're going to make some changes so we're going to log out and we'll log back in and this time when we log in we're going to actually 
download the file and delete the file. So we'll do a get on it. And then we're going to go through a process of deleting the file as well. So we're going to right click and delete. And once we've deleted the file, we'll go back and we'll have a look at the log file that's being produced. So we'll look at the audit log file and this time we've got a lot more information. So we can see the file was deleted. It was downloaded and then deleted by me as a user. So let's take a look at model states in the vault. So what are model states? Autodesk have introduced model states into Inventor Professional in 2022. And the capability is very similar to what we've seen in the past with iParts and iAssemblies. Although now we can configure all the information and store it in a single file instead of multiple files. And each model state supports unique I properties, parameters, and bill of materials information. If you want more information about model states in Inventor 2022, then tune in to our What's New for Inventor Professional 2022 video. So once you create the model state information, what can you do with the files and how do you store them inside of the vault? So we can still check them in using our Inventor vault add-in. We can open and place a model state from the vault, assign items to model states with different part numbers, and we can map item properties to model state I properties. So let's take a look at how that works. So inside Inventor, we've got a sheet metal pack which already has model states defined. So on the left hand side in the browser, we've got a folder called model states. And when we expand it out, we can double click on each of the model states to activate them. We can also open up our files within model states specifically. So if we go ahead and close off the files, we can then go back to the open dialog box and select the options and define which model state we would like to open the file within. So once the file is open, we can see by looking at the I properties for each of the model states, we can update and specify I properties specifically for that state. So if we look at the I property for part number on each of the states, we can see that it's the exact same for each state. So if we open up a part which has got a different part number for each state, so if we go ahead and open up the adapter, and if we look at the model states for this, this file, we can see that the properties for each model state are defined per size of the adapter. So we've got our M20, our M24, and our M28. So how does it look when we check these files into the vault? So let's go back to our sheet metal part. We'll check it into the vault. And then we'll take a look at how it's been dictated inside the vault. So when we look at the sheet metal part and we assign and update items to that part, then we'll save and close. And then we'll go to the item. So we can see by selecting the item that only one part has been added to the item. So if we now go with the different part numbers in the adapter and we do the same process when we check the file in and again once it's inside of the vault we go ahead and assign items And then we go to that item. So we can see here that it's added the M20, M24 and M28 items to our part. So if we go to the item master, we can see that the adapter with the M20 
has been assigned items as well as the M24 and M28. So let's take a look at how it looks in the assembly environment. So inside the vault, we've got an assembly which we're going to locate called the exhaust assembly. And on the right hand side in the properties panel, you can see that at the moment the description is blank. So we're going to go ahead and open this assembly and check it out inside of Inventor. So once we've done that, on the left hand side, we're going to have a look under the model states folder. So you can see we don't actually have any model states that have been created within this assembly. So we're going to, head, going to go ahead and create two new model states. So we'll activate the master and investigate the properties. And under project, we're going to add a description. So we'll type in master model and we'll apply that. So what happens when we type in master model to that description is it's added to the spreadsheet. So we're going to double click on the model state number one and we're going to make a change to the part number property this time. And the reason for that is now the columns will be added to the spreadsheet. So we're going to go ahead and edit the spreadsheet. And we're going to filter over some additional information from the properties. So when it opens up, we can see the, na the name of the member. We can see the description because we made a, a change to the description and we can also see the part number. So we're going to copy over the state names from the member to the description and we're going to make a change to the part number for state number two. We'll do a bit of a save and close. We'll save the whole assembly and we'll go ahead and check that into the vault with those changes we've made. So because we don't have any assigned items to the assembly just yet, it will only take over the description from the master model. So once it's checked in, we can go ahead, jump over to the vault and take a look at the information in the property panel. So we can see the master model descriptions came through. So now we're going to assign items. And then we'll take a look at those items. And you can see that each of the exhaust assembly states have been assigned an item. So if we take a look at the description for each of those items, we can see it's recorded the model state information that we specified within the iProperty description. So if we do it the opposite way this time, so let's say for instance we want to open and make a change to the description in each of our items and push that information back to the iProperties inside of Inventor. So we're going to open up each item that's been specified to each of the states and we're going to add dash testing to the description. So once that prop those properties have been manipulated inside of each of the items, we're going to go ahead and just check that the property panel is reading the correct information. And then we're going to go over to the model and we're going to open it up inside Inventor and we're going to look at those changes. So we're first of all going to open it up and we'll check it out. And then we're going to have a quick look at the master. And if we look in the I properties currently, because we haven't made an edit to the I properties and we haven't updated them and synchronized them, um, we're going to have to go ahead and update the properties. We'll just do it on the parent. And then we'll take a look at the model state I properties to check that the testing has actually came through.
Okay, so we can activate the master again, do a quick save. And if we check the files back in, So let's take a look at the ability to turn off assigning items. Inside of the vault by default on the right click menu, we've got the option to assign or update items. And inside Inventor, when we open up a part, we've got that option on our right click menu as well. So if we open up a part, and we locate the show details, we can right click on the part and we can see assign update item. If we log out of our profile, and if we go back to the vault, tools, application options, vault settings and items, configure and we can turn off enable assign update item creation so click on no close and close the dialog we can log back out and we can log back in and this time when we select our file and right click on it we don't get the option to assign that item and just to double check we go back into inventor and we log back in And again, if we open the same part and we click on our show details, we can right click and you'll see the option has disappeared. So the next um, set of slides, guys, are going to be around um, enhancements. I'm not going to demonstrate the replication, but this is for our customers that are using replication. So Autodesk have now replaced the merge replication technology in Vault 2022 with a transactional replication safety technology where the data synchronizes almost immediately. So all read operations continue on the subscriber, but the write operations only occur on the publisher. The change eliminates the need for ownership and defines the publisher as the only writable server. All data on the publisher is replicated to the subscribers to keep them up to date. And just a note that file replication remains unchanged from the previous replication model. So some of the benefits of this include reduction of administrators overheads of support and configuration, improve re replication stability and liability, and elimination of the need for object ownership. So if you've got any questions around replication in Vault 2022, please feel free to contact us and we can answer them. So let's take a look at the general enhancements. So Autodesk have introduced two more system properties that help you with the release of your files during state change. So they've introduced a latest approver and latest release date. So the name of the latest user who changed the state to released displays on the latest approver property. And the date of the latest revision or the date of the creation of the latest version of the history displays in the latest release date. So that's going to help you be able to record things specifically during the state changes. So Autodesk have also added a property for has model state. So in the previous video um, clips, we've seen that Autodesk have introduced model states. And if you want to identify whether a model in your vault has a model state, then you'll see that now there's a new property which is called has model state, and it will define whether it's got a model state or not. Autodesk have also added a duplicate search increase criteria uh, inside of Inventor uh, whenever you're looking for duplications. So you'll notice that when you're looking for find duplicates within the Inventor application, you'll notice that now you've got access to uh, tick boxes for same material, mirrored parts and extract matches as well. 
So let's move on and take a look at the Thin Client. So one of the more um, exciting updates that Autodesk have introduced in Vault 2022 is the revamp of the Thin Client. So when we look at the Thin Client, you're going to notice things that have changed in terms of the, the modern interface. You're going to see a DAC theme that's been added to the visual accessibility. Uh, the viewer within the the thin clients changed as well, so it's now going to be an Autodesk Forge viewer. We're going to see things that have changed inside the change orders, and also we've now got access to share links for quick sharing. So let's jump in and take a quick look. So we're going to take a copy of our link to the thin client, and we're going to take it to our web browser, and we're going to paste it in, and we'll go to the thin client web browser. So you can see here. The web browser's changed on the initial sign-in. So we're just going to sign in and then we're going to take a look at the files that we've got accessible to us within the Vault environment within the Thin Client. So you can see we've got all our structure for our projects that we worked on earlier on within the Vault. And you can see all the files within those folders as well. You can see the category, the life cycle state, revisions, checked out by information. So if we select one of the files, we can see the properties, you can see the history of that file. We've also got the op opportunity to put the, the, the properties grid on. We can look at where it was used and any items or change orders that have been attached to that model. So interesting thing is now we can look at the view, which is powered by Autodesk's Forge. So if we just wait on this to, to update, we can see very similar tools at the bottom of the screen that will allow us to navigate into the model and do things like measure or explode. So we can see here where we can use our orbit tools, which we're familiar with. We can use our exploded tools where we can explode it. And we can look at things like measurements. We can also have a look at secluding specific items. So if we go and look for something specific, select on it, we can use our option for isolate as well. So we can isolate parts within our assembly environment. We can zoom in and out as we would normally do to see the focus of the part. So we can see, uh, select all the objects again so that we can view everyone, every, every one of them. Uh, we, we've also got options for um, the model browser. So we can go to the model browser where we can turn on and off visible, visibility of specific components or parts. But in general, the, the, Forge, um, the, the Forge viewer is very, very, well put together. So if we look at searching for a part, so we know that exhaust assembly exists. So we can look for a wild card within our thin client and we can find our assembly. And if we select it, we can open up our properties and we can look at our user defined and or system defined properties within that file. So if we select a part again, it means that we can then select to view download or share. So if we click on view, it will open up the viewer independently. And again, it's powered by Forge. So this one here can be exploded as well. And again, we can look at things like document browsers and properties that are specific. So we can look at the specific properties again in the viewer as well as the settings. So if we want to see different settings, we can look through navigation, appearance, and environment settings. And if we go down to the bottom, just have a look at the lighting selection. So as you select, you can see the environment in the background update. So we've got our basic pan and orbit tools within our viewer. And you can see how clear the assembly is. We can go full screen and we can escape out of that full screen when we're finished. So if we go back into the vault and if we look at things like items, so we can see there's items that ones that we attached earlier on. So we can look at the properties and the details of those items within the thin client. It's just more accessible it's got a nicer feel. So we can look at the change orders as well. We can 
specify the details, look at the, the properties. We can look at records and attachments as well. So if we go up to the top right hand corner, we can see some information as well. So these are the settings you'll be familiar with if you've used a thin client before. But as you can see, everything's just a bit more easier on the eye. Things are easier to find. It's not as clunky. You've got access to your help and support as well. So thanks for taking the time to watch our Watts new video for Vault 2022. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at Symmetry. Thank you. Bye.